so you've gotten through most, if not all, of that pogle. We'll pick up the pieces if there are any left um, on Monday. But you don't actually have to go, you understand what an isotope is at this point. You don't have to go uh, all the way uh, through the whole thing in order to uh, continue. So I want you to go to page seven in your notes. And if you need to press pause, take a second and get your notes out, that's fine. Anyway, I want you to also open up your reference tables, and I'd like you to open up to the periodic table, and I want you to take a look at the, all those masses on the periodic table, and those are in the upper left corner of every box. And I want to know what is strange about those numbers based on what we've seen with mass numbers to this point. So press pause, and I want you to come up with an answer for that. Okay, you're back. Uh, did you see that all the numbers were odd? Is that what you came up with? You didn't? Good. That's not the right answer. So the right answer is that they're all decimals, whereas we've been using whole numbers the whole time. And the question that I have to ask you is, well, how is it possible, if you're just counting protons and neutrons, how is it possible that you could get decimals? There are a couple of ways you can come up with it, so I'd like you to spend a couple of moments and think about it with your smush pairs. So smush up, and let's uh, let talk about it for 20, 30 seconds. Go ahead. Okay, now share around the room as to what it is you came up with. Okay, raise your hand if you thought it had something to do with that itty-bitty mass of an electron we talked about way back when. It's a good idea. Um, it's not the act, act not, it's not the overriding thing, but I'm not going to tell you that if you get to many, many electron situations, uh, like further down the periodic table, that those don't have some impact on the atomic mass, but that is not really where the decimals come from. The way we get to atomic number, uh, the way we get to the atomic masses, which is different than mass number, the atomic masses, the numbers on the periodic table are actually done with something called a weighted average. And for that, I want to um, give you a separate example. So you can take out a separate piece of paper if you want or, or not. Uh, I'm going to open up a new uh, document here. And let's just uh, very simply, I used to do this with pencils and markers, but unfortunately I don't have that right there in front of me. So let's uh, first just take uh, let's make it very easy, okay? So we've got, um, oh, I know, we'll do, we'll do test scores, okay? And you're really awesome students, so you've got a 90 and a, hundred, and a 100. What's your average? Average is 95. It's the number uh, that's directly in the middle. When you only have two numbers, it's pretty easy. Uh, the average is 95. Now, how did you determine that? Okay, there are lots of ways to do it, but the most common way that you learned is to take, okay, 90 plus 100 and divide it by 2. Fine, and that is 190 over 2, which is 95. Good. No problem there. Let me ask you this. What if I had these scores? 90, 100, and another 100. Would you expect the average to still be smack dab in the middle of those two scores. On the count of three, say it, whether you do or don't. One, two, three. Right. You'd feel really cheated if I were to give you a 95. That would be a bad average to give you. The average is, is it weighted more towards the 100 or more towards the 90? Towards the 100, okay? So how would you do this average? All right, so here we go. you would be all good, faithful math people. 90 plus 100 plus 100, and you divide the whole thing by 3. And that would be uh, 290 over 3, which is, all right, I can figure this. It's 96 and 2 thirds, but let's just make sure. 290 over 3 is, oh my goodness, 96 and 2 thirds. So uh, we'll do 96 point six six six. That's approximately that, okay? All right, fine. And yes, I know you'd all argue that you want a 97 because that's what it should be rounded to, but you know what? We're just playing this game. So I want to show you that there's another way to deal with this. Uh, well, I mean, before we do that, let me give you one more example. What about this one? So make the numbers a little bit easier. How about now? 
Is that a 95 average? No. Is that a 96 and two-thirds average? No. It's even better, right? You have four hundreds and only one 90. So clearly the frequency of some of these numbers is affecting the average, right? Based on the old math way to do it, that would be, all right, 490 over five grades that we have now, and that's a, a 98, okay? And so there, there's a really good score, right? 98, you got four hundreds and a 90. But I want to show you another way that you can go ahead and do this uh, in just a moment. Let's apply this back to um, our notes, and there we go. Let's look at this class example. We'll work it out, and then I'm going to show you a different way of calculating weighted average back with the example of the grades. So, uh, okay, normally I'd have, you know, I don't know, probably have, uh, who would read now? Probably Michaela, but whatever. We're here, so I'll read. Chlorine has two naturally occurring isotopes, chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. Chlorine's atomic mass, though, if you look it up on the periodic table, is, all right, you've got to do that. Go ahead and write it down. And I'm not going to write it, so it's clearly not directly in between 35 and 37. It's not 36. How could that be possible? If you only have 35 and 37, how could it be possible that the atomic mass of chlorine is, is 35.453? How is that possible? Right, there must be more of one of them than the other, just like there were more hundreds than the 90s. So which one is there more of, chlorine 35 or chlorine 37? Right, there's more chlorine 35. So in fact, I'm gonna tell you this piece, and you'd have to be told this, you can't make this up. Um, the uh, ratio of Chlorine 35 to chlorine 37 is approximately 3 to 1, and we're going to play that game for now. So if I were to do the weighted average, I would have 3 35s, so 35 plus 35 plus 35, and 1 37, and now I've got four things to divide by, and I want you to go ahead and calculate it. Go. Did you get 35 and a half? Now, these are approximates, the 35s and the 3 to 1 ratio approximates. So this is not exactly 35.453, but you've got it right up, you know, up rounded to that nearest tenth. You now understand how it's possible that that could be the weighted average. Well, let's go back to our grades example. And I'm going to show you how we can do it a slightly different way, and then we're going to apply it back to um, the uh, elements and their atomic masses. So take a look with me back at this last example of this uh, really awesome set of scores. 90 and then 400s. Instead of doing it this way, where I add them all up and divide by five, I can think about each of these being uh, happening one-fifth of the time, right? One-fifth of the time got a 90, a fifth, a hundred, a fifth, a hundred, a fifth, a hundred, a fifth, a hundred. So what I can do is I can say, all right, so one-fifth of the time I got a 90, and I'm going to add that to well, let's see, I got 100 each of these times, that's four-fifths of the time, 100. All right, so let's simplify that. One-fifth, many of you know, is 0.2. So one-fifth times 90 is 18. 18. And four-fifths of 100, 0.8 times 100, is 80. And magically, although not so magically, this comes out to be 98, which is the weighted average of these grades. Notice, I'm really doing all the same math, but way I, the way I did it was, instead of just adding them all up and dividing by 5, I used their frequency of occurrence and multiplied it by the value. Well, let's go back to this other example. Go back to this example. Instead of doing it this way with the chlorine and the uh, 35 and chlorine 37, I could have said, well, three quarters of the time, so 75% or 0.75 times 35, plus a quarter of the time, 0.25 times 37, equals, go ahead, work it out. Quickly, click, 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 click. Amazingly, it's 35 and a half. And so using this, you can actually do a weighted average, even with percentages that don't work out very well. We're going to do that in just a moment.